All right, well, this is study nine of Colossians. We're going to be looking at chapter two, verse 11 to 15. Before we do, we'll answer the questions from chapter two, verse six to verse 10. So there's four questions. And the first question was about how we continue the Christian life. Now, the Colossian believers began the Christian life by faith, and they were to walk in Christ the same way, by faith. This is similar to Galatians chapter three, verse two to three, which I'd encourage you to go and read. And there in Galatians, Paul was telling the believers that they received the Spirit and received Christ by faith and were to continue growing by faith. The Judaizers, remember in Galatians, were telling them that they needed to add uh, the law of Moses to their faith. Here, it's a similar principle. The Colossian believers are being told by the false teachers to add something to their faith. The three metaphors being used here are walking, planting, and building As we root ourselves more and more into who Christ is and who we are in him, then we will grow in him. We will be built up in him and we'll be firm in our faith. Our lives will then overflow with Christ-likeness and thanksgiving. Question two then was about what the false teachers were doing. The false teachers used persuasive speech, seeking to lure the Colossians away with Uh, hidden or deep wisdom that actually wasn't hidden or deep wisdom. It was just pretend. uh, It was just false. And they didn't have revelation from God. They offered instead empty man-made traditions and superstitions involving spiritual beings. Question three then. Jesus Christ, however, is God in the flesh, supreme king and ruler over everything, including the invisible realm of thrones, dominions, rulers, and authorities. You'll see that in chapter 1, verse 16. And then question 4, in Christ we are complete or filled. He is the fullness and he fills us, bringing us to fullness. We have everything we need through faith in Christ for eternal life. Paul is basically saying here that the false teachers are offering something that's beneath Christ and something the Colossian believers don't actually need. Let me try and illustrate it for you. Imagine you had a 500 piece jigsaw puzzle made out of solid pure gold. Imagine it was complete. You'd put all 500 pieces together. Then a person comes to you and says that your puzzle isn't complete and offers you a clay jigsaw piece to add to it. Well, first of all, what they are offering is so beneath the pure gold that you already have. And second of all, You don't actually need what they're offering since you've already finished the puzzle. And this is what Paul's really trying to say here. You have Christ. You're complete and filled in him. You don't need what the false teachers are offering. So now we're in study 9, verse 11 to 15 of chapter 2. And here Paul continues to show why the Colossian believers don't need what the false teachers are offering. So question 1, what has happened to those in Christ in chapter 2, verse 11 to 12? Question two, what else has happened to those in Christ? Chapter two, verse 13 to 14. And question three, what has Christ done to the spiritual beings? In chapter two, verse 15. God bless.